so welcome to this video on independent events. So two events are said to be independent if one event does not affect the other, um, or rather the probability of the other event. So for example, imagine when we roll a dice, uh, the previous outcome does not affect the probability of an, the next outcome. So for example, if I was to roll the dice and I get a six, the next time I roll the dice, I still have the same probability of getting a six. It's not changed by what I got in my previous roll. So when this happens, these events are called are, are said to be independent. So however, if you're choosing cards from a pack of playing cards without replacement, then the probability will change each time you pick a card. So remember that a standard pack of cards has 52 in it. Uh, once I pick a card and I don't replace it, straight away we're down to 51 cards. That means that the probability is definitely going to change. Okay, so because the probability change, these events are said not to be independent. So it's important that you understand independence and there's really two ways that you could be asked to deal with this. So the first way is to prove that two events are independent and the second is to use the fact that two events are independent. And I have an example of each so you can see what I mean with these. So there's a formula for independence and uh, you do need to know this off, it's not in the log table so please highlight it, make sure it's written down somewhere and it's um, it's top of your list of you know formulas to learn for probability and statistics. I know there's quite a bit that um, is not in the log tables in this section but you know they're all just so important and these questions are so straightforward um, but all you need to have is that formula. So do try and remember it. So the formula is the probability of A multiplied by the probability of B is equal to the probability of A intersection B. And remember, in sets notation, intersection means and. Okay. So where this formula actually comes from is the conditional probability formula. So if you can remember back to conditional probability, I'll just make a note here. So conditional probability. Okay, so if you can remember that formula, it said the probability of A given B, so the probability that A happens given B has happened, is equal to the probability of A intersection B over the probability of B. However, if the events are then said to be independent, the fact that B has happened does not change the probability of A. That's what we said independence was. So the probability of A given B is still just the probability of A. And that is equal to the probability of A intersection B over the probability of B. And when we rearrange that, we get the probability of A multiplied by the probability of B is equal to the probability of A intersection B. So that's where the formula comes from. So it's just coming from conditional probability and then using the fact that we know independence means one event is the probability one event doesn't is not affected by the other. But if you look at the formula as well, it's this little dot here actually means multiply. So it's the probability of A multiplied by the probability of B is equal to the probability of A and B. And that's something that you would have been doing since junior cert. We would have always said if you see the word and you multiply so i suppose now we're kind of getting to the point where we're saying well that's not always true it's only true if the events are independent so um it isn't i suppose a new formula so try not to get panicking about all these formulas that you have to learn this is something we did anyway all you need to do is remember that this only works for independent events so probability of a multiplied by the probability of b is equal to the probability of a intersection b so i've used the conditional probability formula just to show you where it came from so um, if you haven't already revised conditional probability there is a video up on conditional probability so do take a look at it and um, if you're looking at that conditional probability formula thinking I don't remember that so do go back and revise that as well so let's take um, a quick example so two events a and b are such that the probability of a is equal to 0 0.2 the probability of a intersection b is 0 0.15 and the probability of a complement intersection b is 0 0.6 
Okay, so they want us to then state whether A and B are independent events and justify your answer. So the first thing I'd say is um, there is two parts of this question that I haven't put in here. However, I did cover them in the um, conditional probability video because they were relevant there. So I've just kept the relevant parts, but um, we do need to fill in this Venn diagram. So the first thing they tell us is the probability of A. So remember, A is this full circle here. So this full circle has to be 0 0.2. There's already 0 0.15, so there must only be 0 0.02 left here. Okay, so that's done. Then uh, this part here is already in. Then they have the probability of A complement intersection B. So A complement is everything except A. It's the opposite of A. So it's everything in that box that's not A. And where that intersects with B is actually this piece here. Okay, just a bit on the outside. So it's A complement, so everything that's not A intersection B. So that would be the same thing as if they said the probability of B less or not A, so the slash. So work, watch out for the different ways that they um, ask you to fill in these Venn diagrams. Okay, um, now we're nearly there, but um, you should know that when we have a Venn diagram and we have um, the universal set, so where we have the box around it, that should all add up to 1. Now, if we do that at the moment, we find that actually it only adds up to 0 0.8. So there's 0 0.2 that must sit outside of both of these sets. So it's important to always double check this. Now, saying that in the next example, you'll see that we don't have the box around it, so we're not able to use the fact that it adds up to 1. So it only works when we have that box around it. So then they ask us to state whether they're A and B are independent events. So remember, the probability of A and B happening should equal the probability of A multiplied by the probability of B. And if this works, we can state that they're independent. So let's sub in. A intersection B is 0 0.15. Uh, probability of A. Now be so careful here. It is not just 0 0.02. It is 0 0.02 plus 0 0.15. Uh, given that we were told what the probability of A is up here, you shouldn't get that incorrect. However, probability of B is the same thing. You want 0 0.6 plus 0 0.15. So it's the whole of B and the whole of A. Please don't make that mistake. It's a very common mistake. So this gives us 0 0.2 by 0 0.75 and when we do that we get 0 0.15 is equal to 0 0.15 so that is true therefore a and b are independent events so you have to finish it off you have to state what they've asked you to state it's not enough to just do the formula so independent events okay Okay, so you said yes, they are independent and our justification is above. So this is second and the last example. So again, it's a Venn diagram. So two events A and B are represented in the diagram where A intersection B is 0.1. Uh, the probability of B less A is 0 0.3. So you can see that that is just the part of B that does not intersect with A. And the probability of A less B is X. So again, that's the bit of A that doesn't intersect with B. Write down the probability of A in terms of X. So let's start with that. So probability of A is going to be this full circle here. Okay, so we have this full circle. So that's great. So just be careful with that. We're saying that's equal to X plus 0 0.1. And that's as simple as it can be made we can't add these two terms together because we have an x and a number so that is as simple as it is so then it says hence or otherwise find the value of x for which a and b are independent events and um, so we now are told that they are independent we don't have to prove it but we're told that when we do this when we sub into this formula the probability of a by the probability of b that it will work. We're told that. So the probability of A intersection B is 0 0.1 and that's equal to the probability of A which is X plus 0 0.1 and probability of B is then 0 0.1 plus 0 0.3. It 
again be careful that's the whole of b so 0 0.1 is equal to x plus 0 0.1 and this simplifies down to 0 0.4. Now we can multiply out the right hand side. So we get 0 0.4x plus 0 0.04. Be careful there. Uh, rearranging, we get 0 0.4x is equal to uh, 0 0.1 minus 0 0.04. I'm going to move up here. So 0 0.4x is equal to 0 0.06. So x is equal to 0 0.06 divided by 0 0.4. So x is equal to 0 0.15. So in this case, we were able to use the fact that the two events were independent to work out a missing value.